Hey, let me try to burp, burp. there. Hello. Um, how are you guys doing? Trying to, to do this in the best way I can. Trying to make it so um, visible. Got to get a better setup for this. Um, please let me know. I don't think anybody's on right now, but please let me know if you could hear me. Um, if the audio is working because sometimes it doesn't, um, I'm sorry. It's a little blurry. Let me just try to clean that. Um, but that's what we got. So loud and clear. Yay. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for coming on right now. I feel like, I don't know if I've ever done a live at five. Um, so this will be very interesting. I, um, I, okay, so I was going to post a Q and A today and I got a new camera, so I did not, long story short, I didn't film <laughs> it, did not film it. So, um, I'm basically going to be answering those questions today and then that's, yeah, that's basically it and answering the questions I got. And also if you guys have any, um, I'm going to be on for probably like 40 minutes or so. So I'm going to just jump into the questions right now. Um, and we're going to go through them. So let's see. Let's, um, okay. So where do I start? Um, if you did not have to work a, okay, so Katie Sawyers, I think I said that right. She asked, if you didn't have to work a nine to five uh, to pay your bills, what would you do instead? Ooh, such a good question. Um, so basically, if you've been following me for a while, you know that editing and music is my passion. Um, let me, is can everybody still hear me? The heat just came on, it's a little loud. Uh, but anyways, editing is my passion. And if I can somehow mix editing and music together, that would be like my dream job, like music videos. Um, and somehow creatively telling a story through music and through uh, film and video, all that. It's like, that's my passion. So, yeah, telling stories through video and music. What is your favorite singer and band? I feel like I get, I get this question quite a lot. Um, this is a hard one. I don't really have a favorite singer or band. I feel like it changes all the time and it's hard to just pick one. Um, some some of my go-tos are always like The Killers, uh, Bon Iver, Childish Gambino. I've been really on a Lizzo kick. I really love her. Um, atmosphere is great. Frank, please be gentle. He is going to try to jump. What do you need, bud? Okay. Let me move him really quick. Frank, don't be a dink. Ugh. Want to say hi? Want to say hi? No. Um, yeah, so those are probably my favorite at the moment. Uh, but it's always changing. So, okay, bud. Let's let's go go down. He's so mad. He hates when I do lives. Okay. Let's move on. Um, what is one thing, this is from Robert W. Shaw. What is one thing you're going to keep from 2018 and one thing to throw away? Oh my gosh, this is such a good question. Um, one thing I'm going to keep. Um, um, one thing I'm going to keep. Hey, you need to behave. He is being so naughty. Frank, one thing I'm going to keep. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about this one. Something I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep neon colors. Um, I feel like towards the end of the year, I, well, actually probably in the middle too, I was really into neon colors. Like yellow was like my jam. I was just, I loved it in the summer and in the winter. And I am going to keep the neon colors for 2019 um, and bring them out and try to do more with that. And something I'm going to throw a throw away is... It was going to be dating apps, but now I'm kind of like delving back into that world. But probably, probably I'll say, I'll say Tinder because Tinder is one app I will never download again. So I'm throwing away Tinder. I never want to open it again. The only dating app I kind of use is Bumble, but like Tinder, don't need it. Throw it away. Thank you. Next. <laughs> okay. How is the EDM scene in Seattle? Um... I, 
yeah. So EDM is never. Oh, this is by um, Marcia Carl. Car Cariello, Cariello, ninety six. So sorry, I probably didn't say that right. The EDM seems okay. I feel like there's a lot of um, ravers in in Seattle and in Washington in general. Uh, they have a ton of festivals as well. Uh, I went to one, man, like two years ago. I made a whole vlog about it. So it's very like it's here. Um, however, I do feel like it's not the most popular music. Um, I could be wrong. It's definitely not the first music that's on my radar. So I definitely could be wrong, but I feel like it's here. I feel like it's all around and there's definitely groups of people that are very into that. Okay. The next one is from Senzere. Senzere. Uh, when are you moving to Colorado? I don't know. I still need to check out Colorado. I feel like I have never visited. So I'm very, um, I'm very curious on what Colorado is like. And I'm hoping that this year I can check it out and, kind of just play in Colorado and see how cool it is because I've heard only amazing things. Okay, let me move to the next set. Um, what is the best high school in Seattle? Okay, best high school, I kind of had to think about this one because I don't really, like high schools and middle schools are not on my radar, radar. However, I do work in real estate and this one isn't necessarily in Seattle, but Newport High School is like, a high school that a lot of people really want their kids to go to. Like when we sell homes, that is one school that parents make sure that their home is near enough so that their kids can go to that school. So Newport High School, it's in like Bellevue slash Factoria, which is like, it is Bellevue, but it's called Factoria. So Newport High School. I feel like that is a really good one. Um, are you still loving Seattle? Are you still loving Seattle and moving there this fall? And what are some affordable neighborhoods? Um, yeah, I do still love Seattle. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I have like a love hate relationship with Seattle. I love it sometimes. I hate it other times. Um, but I do, I do love Seattle. It feels, you know, like I've kind of made my like a home for myself here. So it'd be kind of weird to just pick up and go. However, I'm always down to try new things. Um, Affordable neighborhoods. I feel like I've talked about this a little bit, but Central District is very affordable and it's still in Seattle. Uh, if you're looking a little more outside of Seattle, I feel like Green Lake is a good option. Um, Ravenna, Ravina, um, that one's okay. And uh, yeah, but I, I feel like Central District is good and it doesn't get a lot of um, coverage. Like I feel like a lot of people don't talk about Central District because it's so close to Gap Hill, but it's really, you have a great location and it's a little bit cheaper than Capitol Hill and like downtown and Mont Lake and all that stuff. So check it out. Um, okay. How do you dress for Seattle weather? This is a really, really good question. And I don't really know how to answer it. Because Seattle's weather is very like all over the place. It's very up and down. You never really know what's going to happen. And it took me a long time to kind of understand it. Um, but Seattle weather is rainy in the morning and then sunny in the afternoon and then rainy by three and then rainy at night. At least that's kind of how winters are. Uh, they're sunny and then they bring the rain in. It's all over the place. So it can be really hard to dress for. I always say though, get like a really good waterproof jacket get a good pair of like waterproof shoes, whether that's boots or tennis shoes. And um, I feel like it's a good idea for like to wear a baseball cap or something with a brim on it because not everybody wants to like bring an umbrella around. So if you have like a brim, it just, it's easier for walking and you don't have to like worry about water in your face because that's like the most annoying thing. So like some sort of baseball hat or something with a brim would be good. Uh, but that's, that's a really tough question because you kind of have to have layers and you have to have t-shirts and you have to have sweatshirts and it can be kind of a mess, but I feel like I, like I wore this today. I have a tank top underneath it. Um, I did take this off at all. If it was raining, this would have sucked to be wearing. Um, I wear a lot of leggings. People don't really dress up too fancy over here. Like sometimes you'll see people in suits and dresses, but like, I don't know. It just feels like people are very relaxed here. So relaxed clothing is always welcome. Um, what is the youngest person you've dated and the oldest in Seattle? Um, I haven't really dated like anybody in Seattle. I've been on dates with a few people here and there, but, um, 
I guess I kind of have dated maybe a little bit. The youngest person I went out with was 21. That was a mess. Um, but too young. I don't know why that happened, but it just didn't work out. He was way too young. And I also just felt like way too old for a 21 year old, even though I'm 25. So it's really not that big of an age difference, but really honey, it is huge. It is a huge age difference. And there's just like, just didn't have much in common with them. So 21. And then the oldest was probably 32. 30, 31 and 32 was the oldest and he was cool. He was really chill dude. Um, okay. Next set of questions. Um, okay. I promise if you have any questions, I'm going to also answer them in like the comments. I just want to get through the ones I had on Instagram first and then I will move over there. Um, are you thinking of moving from Seattle anytime soon? I am always thinking about moving just because I want to experience more things. I want to check out other areas. Um, but right now our lease doesn't end until August. So I am staying here. I'm cherishing every moment of it. And if something comes up, great. And if not, awesome. So always kind of thinking, but I don't know if I'll ever act on it. Why did you decide to no longer be vegan? Um, I think I've addressed this in a couple of videos. So if you've been following me for a while, I used to be vegan. Um, I was vegan for about a little over a year, um, but I stopped being vegan because I was feeling a little um, weak, I guess you could say. And I ended up going to a like a naturopathic doctor and they did blood work and I just came back. My results came back and they were pretty low in some areas that um, should have been higher. And instead of taking like a bunch of supplements, I decided to just incorporate a little bit more meat into my diet. And uh, yeah, so that's why I'm no longer vegan. It was purely because I did not want to take a bunch of pills to get where I needed to. I decided I'd rather just eat and incorporate more meat in my diet. Um, it's, it's a touchy subject. I also just did not like the label of being vegan. Uh, it's weird, but there's like a ton of pressure when you tell people you're vegan or uh, people know you're vegan. It just, it was a pressure that was an unnecessary to what I already had going on. So I decided to just not do it. And yeah, that's why I'm not vegan anymore. I, I would like to get back to it though. I would eventually like to be vegan again. I just think that with anything like being vegan or even being vegetarian, you have to be smart with what you're putting into your body just because you could be a vegan and be the most unhealthiest human. And it's really easy to eat a lot of junk food when you're vegan because it's quick, it's easy. Um, so yeah, I feel like I did like Whole30 in November and that taught me a lot of things. It just taught me that it, you can still eat meat and be completely happy. And like, it, it, it's a hard in between though because I, I'm all about animal rights and it when I really think about it, it just it doesn't feel right to eat another animal. But right now in my life, I'm just not, I don't think mature is the right word. I'm just not willing to take the time and educate myself as much as I need to because I'm just doing so much, so many other things. It's really hard to make time for it, which is really a bullshit answer, but it's honestly like that's the truth. So next, uh, um, okay, I think that was it. Oh, I had somebody ask me, um, what are the best shopping areas in Seattle and what are the best bars? My favorite shopping areas. A lot of you guys already know this. I love Maria Seal. I think that that store is beautiful. It's picture perfect. Um, it's so cute. You have to check it out. Um, if you're looking for more shopping areas, Pacific place has some stuff. It's just so expensive. I don't think I've ever bought anything from there. The Nordstrom is worth checking out, even though if you're a cheap ass like me, you probably won't buy much, but it's very beautiful. Um, they have a Forever 21 over there. What else? They have some cute places in um, the Capitol Hill area. They have Glasswing, which is a really cute plant shop that is new to my radar. It's so cute. Gus just did a class there yesterday, like a plant class. Uh, what else? Yeah, bars. I, I'm... I feel like a lot of you guys probably already know this. My favorite bar is Capital Cider. I, I go there all the time. They have warm olives and I love olives. So I'm always at Capital Cider. 
Uh, I am checking out Rhino very soon because they have a disco ball and I really, really want to check it out. Um, sometimes I go to Numos, like this weekend I'll be at Numos for like a dance party thing. Um, there's a bunch, there's a bunch of great bars. I'm not huge into the drinking scene. So, um, I will say this, I, I think it's great that Seattle has a lot of speakeasy bars. Speakeasy bars are really fun. They're kind of different and, um, they're just a little bit more like exciting than a regular bar. So I feel like you're, if you're in Seattle, check out some speakeasy bars, um, knee high, Stocking Company is a good one. Um, my favorite is probably Needle and Thread. Um, Bath Tub Gin Company. There's a bunch. So just do some research and check out some speakeasy ones. Okay. Um, okay. And this one comes from Jax. Uh, hey, Rachel. Um, so I have a question. Given the way artists have been in the news for numerous things surrounding politics and mistreatment of women... Kanye and R. Kelly, uh, is it okay to separate an artist from the art or is listening to anything they put out, anything put out by them prior to said events still being supportive of them as a whole? Okay, so if you didn't, that's a really good question. So basically he's asking my opinion on if I think it's okay to support somebody's music but not support who they are maybe politically or basically what they stand for. Uh, this, this is my thing and this is like, this is just my opinion. Um, I, I'm going to say no to that, but, but here's like the catch 22. You can really love somebody's music, but if they're not a good human, you should not want to support them, even though I know it's really hard to separate that. And the thing is like people make mistakes, like everybody makes mistakes. And if you make like a racist remark, that's a mistake, right? So if they come back and they apologize for that mistake, I have no problem supporting that. If it's a genuine apology, um, I have no problem supporting that because the thing is we all make mistakes. And when somebody apologizes for a mistake that they've made and feels genuinely very bad about it, they are growing as a human and they are growing as an individual. And I respect that of a person. So if we're going to use Kanye, for example, um, I don't, I really try not to support Kanye at all. Um, I like, I liked his music. Um, I grew up on his older stuff and, um, sorry, Frank's just about to jump. Uh, yeah, I grew up on his stuff and he's now this human that I just really don't support because of his politics. And I feel like there's a lot going on with him, but he's just not somebody that I, really like respect as a human, although he makes amazing music. I haven't really seen him come out with like a really genuine apology and apologizing for people that he's hurt or things that he said that's really been just in my book, not correct. If he comes out with an apology, I have no problem supporting who he is because we all make mistakes. And when we go through life, you learn from the mistakes you make. I just feel like if you don't see some sort of apology from that artist, they're not growing as an individual and they're not growing. And therefore, no, I don't support that. I hope that made sense. I know I was rambling. Um, and I know a lot of people love Kanye and that's fine. Like you do you, like everybody's entitled to their own opinion and that's great. But I just feel like when you say things that hurt other people and you don't apologize for that, then there's kind of a little bit of a, an issue with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move over here to the less, seriousness and we're going to just um delve in hello look at all these comments and nice things hopefully okay um hello hey girl how is your day going it's going good what is your cat's name so my cat's name is frankie flowers named after frank ocean and brandon flowers ola from argentina hello so cool are you still vegan, Rachel? So I did answer that. Hopefully you were here. If not, um, make sure to rewind this live afterwards. I am keeping this one up. Um, but I am going to just say something right now. I am not posting a thumbnail of this, of me looking like this. Um, I'm going to just, I'm going to fake it. We're going to post a fake thumbnail. So you can call me out my shit. That's what I'm doing. Hi, Rachel. What do you know about Tacoma? Tacoma. Yeah, I talk about Tacoma a little bit. Tacoma is, I feel like, the next 
the, it's going to be a big city one day. Um, I don't know if it's quite there yet. I feel like Bellevue's next and then possibly Tacoma. Um, but Tacoma's cool. Tacoma's quiet. Uh, I feel like it's pretty safe for the most part. And it is a whole lot of a hell cheaper than Seattle. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's a cool place to be. It's not Seattle though. I feel like it is very removed from it. It's, it's its own thing. Um, but yeah, Tacoma's cool. Hello. What is the best hotel to stay in in Seattle? That's such a good question. Um, let me get back to you on that. I, I have so many things to say. I want to do stuff with hotels so bad. Like I want to test out hotels and like really get the answer to that. So TBD on that. Um, what do you think about the new teams in Seattle, NHL and XFL? Do you think the teams would be successful? I hope that they're successful, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea like what, what those terms mean hockey league right hockey league and xfl those are just like that's a different language to me i'm really not sports savvy uh but yeah i i hope that they're successful oh thank you katie oh i answered one of your questions your name i was like i know your name what is your wine of choice my wine of choice is a dry non-smoky merlot or any type of red. I'm not picky. I just hate smoky flavored. So anything that's not smoky. Go keto. I've heard that before. How is Seattle YouTuber slash art scene? I think it's really good. Um, there is a huge art scene here and there's also a huge YouTube scene here. Um, I feel like I'm not really a part of either of those scenes, but um, if there's something that you are interested, there is a ton of people that do YouTube over here and they they do meetups. They do lots of things. Uh, so that's definitely something to check out. I want to go to the disco too. Rhino Room. That is the place we're going to do disco. And I feel like we're not doing that this week, but we will be there next Saturday, I think. Fingers crossed. Do you follow any sports in Seattle? I do not. Um, I follow the Seahawks a little bit. I would love to like know and learn the Sounders. Um, soccer is something that's been on my to-do list since I was like 10 soccer yeah soccer um but i i just don't uh i don't know a lot of football i'm always rooting for the packers just because i'm from minnesota wisconsin area but the seahawks they they aren't bad either um i don't see how some vegans get mad at people who take more time to transition into the lifestyle or people who struggle with it not everybody is the same correct no that's totally it and um, it comes from both sides too. When you're not vegan, people get mad that you are vegan and people get mad that you aren't vegan. Um, and the more you do research on it, you, you understand why people preach about it. Like, you know how they have those preachy vegans and they're the worst, right? The people that preach to you that you have to be vegan or you need to stop eating meat. Those people are the worst. But I will say this, that after being vegan, I understand why they preach it. It's not a good method, first of all. I will say that preaching is never a good method. Um, you should lead by experience. But you you learn all these terrible things, right, that go on and that happen that you just feel like you have to tell people because if if they feel as hurt as you do, maybe that they'll they'll change and they'll you know change their mind and stop eating meat. So I understand it because the more I did research on it, I was just like so sad all the time because it's so terrible what factories and stuff can do to animals and really you know where you get your meat and stuff it can be really sad but um preaching that to other people is not the way to do it and getting mad at people because they eat meat is not the way to do it and i feel like on both sides you get a little bit of that and it's, it's just too much pressure it's not my thing um i feel like if I do something again with my health or the way I eat, I will probably keep it private just because I don't, that is like one thing I don't really want people's opinion on. Um, but yeah, just thinking out loud, rambling. Okay. She's a Bears fan. I'm not a Bears fan. I mean, I don't really know much about the Bears, so I, I guess I can't say that. Hello. How do you stay so skinny? That's so nice of you. Um, I drink a lot of water and I try to, for the most part, eat whole foods. Um, don't get me wrong. Like I have donuts every once in a while for sure, but I definitely just try to put good food into my body. No soda. I feel like for some reason, there's a lot of people over here that drink soda or pop, whatever you want to call it. No soda, eliminate the sugar, eliminate 
as much as you can. Don't get me wrong. Like I eat sugar still, but eliminate the processed junk food that you don't really need and keep it out of your house. If it's in your house, it's not going to be good. Like I try to not, um, I really try to keep no junk food, especially like chips. I try to keep none of that in my house because chips is my weakness. And if I have it in my house, I'm going to for sure eat it. And like hot Cheetos. Oh my God. Hot Cheetos are my, I love hot Cheetos, but like, what the fuck is a hot Cheeto? You know, like, what is that? So I try to like, not keep that, that shit in my house because a bank's going to be gone if it's in my house. So keep that shit out. Hello, Isabel. Oh, hi, Gus. Are those the 22 rules of storytelling by Pixar I see on the wall? Why do you have that up there? <laughs> Yikes. So, yes, this this is the 22 rules of storytelling by Pixar. Um, Gus and I are teaching ourselves how to tell stories, basically. Um, if you don't know already, Gus is an animator. He's a very good storyteller, and I am learning, and they just have some really great things. If you're not aware with what they are, check them out. If you're into like creative writing or into just telling a story visually, there's, they're amazing tips. So bada bing, bada boom. Are you on Periscope? I am not on Periscope. Um, nope. Sounds like a blast. I'm going to go come. You should come on um, Saturday. I, I'm so excited. So if you guys watched my, um, resolution the video it is on my resolutions list this year list this year to do a meetup i don't know how we're going to do this but we as a whole are going to do a meetup um i want to meet you guys so bad like i i see you guys on here when i um do lives or when you dm me or on comments i see your name and like i feel like i know who you are so i'm really excited to do a meetup really stoked to meet you guys and like take pictures with you guys and like just like make a vlog out of it or something but I feel like we're going to do it in the summer. So let's just, let's write that in the calendar. This summer we're doing a meetup uh, and it's going to be warm. It's going to be sunny and it's going to be great. And I hope that you guys are there for it. I'm going to, the more I talk about it, the more I feel like it's going to happen. So I, I need to talk about it. Uh, so we're going to do meetup and I'm going to just be really annoying about it because I want it to happen. And I want to meet you guys. That made me think of that Katie. Cause I was like, I want to meet you. Like, we should all go to Rhino, but that's like not realistic. Okay. Do you find it very rare to meet people who are, who still live in Seattle and are from Seattle? I'm born and raised here and everyone is surprised that I'm homegrown. Totally. Like I always feel like it's your gem if you're from here and you still live here because it's so many transplants. There's people from all over and it is rare. Like the example, the first guy I dated when I got here, he was from here and still lived here. And I was like, I thought that was like the norm for the longest time. And the, the minute we stopped seeing each other, I was like, oh no, that was like really rare. That was like, that's like not a thing that usually happens. So I feel like, yes, I do think it's rare to meet people that are from here. However, a lot of my Lyft drivers have been from Seattle, which is kind of shocking because I've met a lot that aren't as well, but a lot of my Lyft drivers are always like from Seattle. Vegetarian for six years, vegan on and off. Man, vegetarian for six years, vegan on and off. That's so great. That's what I want to get into. Like just, you know, I want to just cut out the dairy really. And dairy is like my weakness, right? Cheese is so freaking good. And like if you're having wine and then having cheese with the wine, like come on. Like that's that's a tough one. So, yeah. Vegan, I don't know if I could do it again. Are there public libraries out there? Yes, there are. There's some beautiful public libraries out here. The Seattle Library downtown is amazing. It is so banging. It's so cool. The architecture is amazing. Totally worth checking out. If you're like, if it's raining and you're here, I definitely suggest going because it's beautiful. Be like it's just beautifully designed and there's not another building like it in Seattle. So check it out. Hello, Erin. Um, yes, a meetup. I seriously will go to Rhino. My friends and I have been trying to find a good place. Rhino, next Saturday, Katie, be there. That'd be super fun. I'm trying to make like a whole vlog out of it. So, you know, the more faces, the better. Uh, okay. What named, 
what names that can relate to Seattle could go to the team in Seattle and be successful with any suggestions? I'm not sure. Not sure. Dating totally sucked in Seattle. What the hell is wrong with girls out here? I come from New York and never had trouble dating. I don't know if it's necessarily the girls or the guys. I think it's just this weird black cloud that's over Seattle often. Um, I, I feel like I've talked about this a lot and I've been trying not to talk about it as much, but like the Seattle freeze is a real thing. And when the weather gets gloomy and when it gets cloudy, it's really freaking hard to do stuff and want to do stuff. Um, and yeah, I think people just stay inside or they've been flaked on. So they flake on other people. Um, their experiences haven't been the best, so they don't put their best foot forward either. Um, but yeah, it's something that needs to change. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl or however you identify it just, it's a weird, a weird, um, vibe that kind of hangs over the city of the dating scene in Seattle. It's, it's very blah, blase. I feel like that is the correct term. Blase and like nothing special. <laughs> um, what did I miss? I thought this wasn't until 9 p.m. <sighs> did I say 9 p.m.? God, I'm really sucking like pretty hard on Instagram lately. I, my head's been kind of all over this place. This past weekend was stupid and confusing us. So I probably did say nine. Oh, did I say nine? Let's go live tomorrow. Um, no, maybe I didn't say nine. Maybe I didn't. Um, but no, I, it's, it's not nine and I'm sorry if I did say nine. Yep. Cheese is hard. I cut off all dairy, but cheese like once a month. Ooh, some willpower. On the topic of dating, what, why are you, aren't you, like, are you at work? Are you looking for shoes, Gus? Like, why are you on my live right now? I'm so confused with that. Um, on the topic of dating, what is one piece of advice you would give everyone about a dating profile? Like, just one do or don't. Ooh, um, one do, or I guess I should say, I have more don'ts than do's. One don't is don't have don't be wearing sunglasses in every single photo. Like if I can't see a photo of you with no sunglasses, like it's never going to work. I have no idea who you are. Take the sunglasses off so I can see your freaking face. Just have some photos where you're not wearing sunglasses because like, why is that a thing? Also with profiles, if you're with an ex in your picture and you just cross your face out, find a new photo or crop her out. Like don't X her face out. Don't put a little heart over her face. Like literally just crop her out. Like that does not make me want to swipe on you when you like cross your ex's face out because who knows, maybe one day that will be my face. Um, and then a do something you should do, um, is have a bio. And I know that's probably like stupid, but there's a lot of guys that don't have bios and like, are you too good for a bio? Do you not need a bio? Like put a couple words down so I know why I'm swiping because yeah, you're hot, you're cute, but like, that's not enough for me to swipe. So like, just put a little bit about yourself. So I know like what I'm getting myself into. Boom. <laughs> See, yes, see you at the movie. Okay. Is homeless people everywhere? Is our home? I think, you know, like our homeless people everywhere. I heard many homeless people. There's a lot of homeless people here. Um, and then just checking the clock. I have about seven minutes. Um, we'll go to 540. Uh, so I have 10 minutes. Um, there is a ton of homeless people here. Uh, we have a very large drug problem here, um, along with people that just don't want to like live in a home. That's a weird thing, but I've heard and done a little bit of research on that. Like people will actively run away to be homeless and live in our tent communities and stuff like that. Why anybody would want to do that? I don't know, but yes, we have a ton, a ton of homeless people here. Um, if it's something that you're not used to, it is definitely a shock when you first get here. Um, I will say this. I have never had any issues with homeless people. Uh, I never want to just like, I don't know, shit on them because they, they have it hard enough as it is. And, uh, they, I never have felt unsafe because of them. Um, so yeah.
yes, we have a lot of homeless people here. I love going to the library. Can't wait to visit Seattle in March or April. Oh, such a beautiful time to visit. Do you think Seattle is crowded with people? Um, I do not uh, because I've ran into people that I've known. And I feel like if you run into people you know in a, in a city, it's not crowded enough. However, ask somebody who's been here for 20 years and they will strongly disagree with me um, and probably cuss me out. So yeah, it's different of opinion, but I've only been here three years and I feel like it's growing and that's great, but some people disagree. Um, hey, do you ever meet up with, do you ever meet up with people from YouTube? What are some good gyms to go to in Seattle? Good gyms is something I'm still trying to figure out. I do not work out. Uh, I used to work out at 24 hour and then I just, I didn't really like it. Um, so I'm trying to find a different gym at the moment. So I'm sorry. I can't really give you good advice on that, but I do, I feel like all the friends I have here, um, are subscribers and they were people that followed me on my journey. Um, and I used to meet, meet up with subscribers a lot more. Um, but now I'm just, I'm a little bit more busy. I'm, I'm not usually like, I just don't have the time to do that as much. Um, but I, when I do, like, I love meeting up with you guys. Um, it's super fun. It's so nice to get to know you guys. It's just a little hard with my schedule. Um, I'm taking on some more work. So yeah, that's a thing, but I'm hoping to do the meetup so that I can meet all of you guys and we can chat. Um, and yeah, so meet up in the summer. <clears throat> Are you fam familiar with Redmond and Bellevue area? Anything fun there, mainly around Microsoft campus going to be working there? Yeah, Redmond and Bellevue are great. Uh, they're, they're very close to each other. Redmond's very cute. Um, there's a lot of shopping to do over there, I feel like, and Bellevue is so close. I know Bellevue so much more than Redmond. I really don't know Redmond that well. Um, I feel like I live and breathe Bellevue because I'm always there. I feel like sometimes I know it better than Seattle, but Bellevue has some great coffee shops. They've got a great theater. They've got a great little mall. Um, and there's so many different aspects of Bellevue. There's so many different little areas. Um, and it's nice that it's very close to the water as well. <clears throat> I'm like losing my voice. Um, is it important for you for a guy to have a good job making good money? Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I don't really, I guess I've never really thought about that. Is it important that he, it's more important to me that he enjoys what he does um, than it makes a shit ton of money. For the most part, they leave you alone. I live in Capitol Hill and they're everywhere. I, a lot of them <clears throat> are actually pretty friendly. Totally, I completely agree. Hey girl, aloha for, wow, hello. Aloha. Seattle is overcrowded. Um, talking, taking in the Christmas of New Year's week, uh, there was no traffic and everything was very empty because all the transplants went home. Yeah, it was empty. I went to the Speak Needle on Christmas and it was dead. There was nobody out. And I'm like, okay, it's crowded with transplants, but it would be so lonely and boring if it was dead like that all the time. You know what I mean? Like it was so empty and it was nice because it was a change and it was different. But if it was like that all the time, this city could not function. Like there, everything would be closing if the transplants didn't come back. You know what I mean? Do you go hiking often? I do not go hiking often, but I, I wish I did. Um, I don't, I need a hiking buddy. Uh, I don't feel super safe going alone. So, uh, I don't really go hiking that often, but when I do go, I absolutely love it. LA Fitness is a good gym in Seattle. Ooh, okay. Good to know. We have about five, four or five minutes left. Um, so I'm going to answer a few more questions and then I'll have to dip. But Gus and I are going to see um, the Spider-Man movie tonight, the animation. I'm so excited. It looks so good. So I need to meet him downtown. Uh, finally made it. Hello, GT. Um, thanks for all the tips. Coming to look at apartments in September. Oh my gosh, congratulations. That's huge. September is such a great time to come to. Like September is such a beautiful time. I hope that you love it. Uh, best place to live for a 20 something on a low budget. Um, in Seattle, um, get like a six person place and rent a room from that. I feel like those are the best. 
Um, if you're really trying to keep it on a budget and spend like 500 bucks or so, um, the more people you have in a house, the cheaper it will be. Any apartment recommendations in Renton? Ooh, um, I don't really know Renton very well. Uh, I always just suggest checking out the the Facebook group. It's just, you know, that, that group really helped me find a lot of things as well as Craigslist and uh, yeah. Best escape room in Seattle. Hi, Lindsay. I've never been to a, an escape room, so I can't answer that. Do you prefer to live in Seattle? Or, do you prefer to live in Seattle or Bellevue and why? I mean, I prefer to live in Seattle, but um, I can see myself being happy in Bellevue. It's just, I feel like the people in Bellevue are not necessarily like, they're just not my kind of people. Although I do, I really do like Bellevue. Okay, two minutes. Aw, thanks, Stephanie. That was a really nice, um, nice message. Uh, I feel like the Seattle freeze is a real thing. I think that's what you're trying to say. Seattle freeze, not squeeze, maybe, maybe squeeze. Uh, but I've made a, a, quite a few videos on it, on like why I don't love it and uh, why it's a real thing. I do think it's a real thing, but you have to kind of take lead on your life when you're out here and get yourself to do stuff and get out, even though other people are flaky as shit sometimes. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. The name of the Facebook group, let me double check. I will link it in here too, because I'll link it like in the description of the video, but I think it's just Seattle. Yeah. It's Seattle housing rooms. Uh, apartments and sublets. Uh, this is what it looks like. Let's see if it'll focus. Nah. It's the alpaca one. Okay, that was like shitty. It was it's the alpaca Seattle group. There's like 40, almost 45,000 people in the group. When I first had this group or like when I first was like, Hey, you should check out this group. There was 19,000. So Seattle is growing quite a bit. Um, but they have places all the time and some really great deals. Uh, and it's legit cause it's Facebook. You can chat with the people, um, things like that. So definitely check that out. Um, I will be sure to put that in the description below. Anyways, guys, I have to get going. Um, I have to be out of here by like five fifty. So Thank you so much for coming and like chatting with me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, I, I haven't been doing a lot of lives. So if you, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. I'm going to maybe try to do one once a month. Um, so I'm so happy you guys are here. Um, I'm so happy that you guys came and chatted with me and I got to answer some of your questions. Um, if I did not get to your question, please leave, leave it in the um, comments and I will try to get back to you. Um, I, I have a lot of comments I need to to respond to. Um, and uh, yeah, so, okay. Yay. We did it. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have a beautiful evening and I will see you guys very soon. Okay. Bye.